So we've learned all these new things. We've learned how to use fancy types of joins. We've we've stared at the window function video and tried to uh, tried to keep a brave face. So I guess now we've got to try and use them on things. So this sequence uh, is mostly queries that we've already seen before, but where an extra restriction has been added to force us to use a specific um, way of solving it. And just a, uh, like a disclaimer here, for the most part on exam and assignment questions, um, I don't give questions that do this, that say you have to use a specific technique. Um, that is, I, I, I mean, the wording of this question, we have to have this sequence because it's important that we try doing other things. And outer join can be very helpful for stuff other than this. It's good to see it in a familiar setting. But for the most part, if I'm going to give an exam question that contains a restriction like this, I will give you a lot of advance warning. So don't expect, like don't worry too much about getting to an exam and maybe you prefer using the accept operator. Don't panic. It's not like I'm gonna tell you you're not allowed to, like I won't wait until the exam to tell you you're not allowed to use that or something. So if, if the question just says write SQL, then write whatever SQL does the trick. It doesn't have to use adder join, doesn't have to use accept. It's true that there are some SQL features that not everything supports. So SQL Lite, for example, doesn't like full outer joins, um, and uh, and and actually SQL Lite also doesn't support window functions. But um, for the most part in this course, if you're asked to solve a problem, you can solve with any valid SQL you want. Every now and then there's a case where I do have to ask that people do it a specific way, but I will always make sure to give a lot of warnings. So you will, you will, you will know about that well in advance of any uh, occasion where that's required. So for now, don't worry about it. But you should, however, try and develop some dexterity with all of the methods, because even if you like accept or if you like outer join, there are lots of cases where one of those doesn't work and the other one does, even if there is a case like this one where both of them work. So we'll ease in by starting with this query, which is select the names of all products which do not appear in any orders. And full disclosure, honestly, I would use accept for this. That's why I'm telling myself, I'm forcing myself to not do that. Because in my mind, it's pretty easy like to view this as set subtraction. I find all the products that are in orders and I subtract that from the set of all products. Um, but let's take a look. So products, uh, natural join orders. We run that, and of course, it's the usual that whoops, product natural join orders. We can see because I joined products to orders, run off to a great start here. Um, it actually generated uh, every possible pairing of um, products and orders. So, what I meant was products natural join order contents. You think after living with this database for months, I would be able to figure that out. So, there we go. So, we have our usual a natural join of products and order contents. So what I want is to find all the products which aren't here. So I joined with a regular natural join. I joined products to order contents. And uh, we can see that there were some rows of products that didn't get paired up because there are some rows in the products table that were never actually ordered by anybody. So I can get that by using an accept statement, but I can also get that by using an outer join. We know that what's the symptom here is that there are rows of products that didn't get joined and they don't show up in the result. So I could force them to show up in the result by using a left outer join. Remember that writing outer join by itself is not a good idea. Let's actually see what it how it complains if I do that. Products outer join order contents on products dot product ID equals this is this is maybe you can see this is getting annoying order contents dot product ID okay um, and it's saying the error it's giving is sorry what do you mean outer join so that's that's a good point remember that that's an error on an exam and an assignment too if you want to do an outer join you have to tell me what kind of outer join you're doing or I won't know so a left outer join here means every row of products must appear in the result somewhere any row that can't be paired up will be emitted on its own with null values on the other side so there it is we can see now the row for pineapple and the row for apple. Now, I'm, I don't want to have to write this. This on clause is annoying. I want a natural join, but I want the benefit of it having not being an inner join, but being an outer join. So I'm going to use products natural left outer join order contents. And that's more like it. So I still get my two rows for um, pineapple and apple, where order number and kilograms bought is set to null. And now if I'm supposed to select only those products uh, which are never ordered, I could say where, okay, now I have to be careful here. I want the products whose order number was equal to null, so it's never in an order. But do I write this? 
and this in the in-person lectures where I'd leave the awkward silence waiting for somebody to speak up. And eventually somebody would call my, or I'd call the class's bluff or who knows, and, and people would eventually say, no, you can't write that, Bill. Um, you have to write order number is null. And D. Beaver characteristically doesn't want me to do all caps. I, I don't blame it. That's a bit aggressive. Okay, so remember that if I say equals null, I'm going to get nothing because nothing equals null. Any comparison involving null, including equality, comes back not true. If I want to test if, it, if the value is the value null, I have to use this special null comparison operator called is. So here I have all the product IDs uh, where the order number column contains the value null. Now, what's interesting about this is, okay, so what it actually says is give me the names. Select name, and I just get the names right there. One benefit of this over the accept method, so I mentioned before I might use accept, but the reason why I think this is, um, can be a bit cleaner is that if I used accept, I would have to compute a set of product IDs of the products that are, never, that, that are uh, all products, and then a set of product IDs of the products that are ordered and subtract them. Then I have, all I get when I'm done the set subtraction is a set of IDs. And you can go back to the previous Applied SQL lecture to, to figure out why we had to do it that way. Um, why we can't just use a set of names. So I have a set of IDs. I have to then join that back into the products table to get the set of names. Here, the names are just along for the ride. I join products to order contents, and the names are part of the row anyway. So I just do one pretty linear query. I do a join. I then filter some rows, and then I project. And that's actually pretty, that's, that's just three relational algebra op operations. Whereas before I would have had to do, if I use the accept method, oh, let's just go write it. So if I use the accept method, I would have to do something like this. Um, the IDs in the orders is the result of selecting product ID from product natural join orders. And the IDs, all IDs, is select product ID from products. Uh, and so what I need is, okay, so IDs not in orders is then this. Um, it's, it's all of the IDs minus the IDs that are in any orders. And then what I actually want at the end is I want to select the name from products, uh, natural join IDs not in orders. Uh, oh, okay, so when you get an error and you, you used a with statement or with clause, it's, it may well be this problem where it doesn't like having an extra um, comma at the end. Let's just see what, my, what the complaint is here. No, oh, that's ugly. Oh, I made the same mistake I made earlier. So today, for some reason, I think that order contents and orders are the same thing. So if you do products natural join orders, you have to, you're going to get everything. So here I get the result that I would have gotten before. And so now at long last, I can compare these two queries. Uh, and, and we'll notice that um, in terms of the number of operations, again, this is three things. Join, filter, so a join, a sigma, and then um, projection. Here, what I'm doing is, uh, okay, so first I'm doing a project, a join, then projection, then another projection, then a set difference, and then a join, and then a projection. So that would be, what, six operations. Now, no big deal. The database probably does the same amount of work both ways. It's pretty good at optimizing. It can often see through your queries for several levels, and so maybe it actually does the same thing for both of them. Um, for me, this is a more natural set query, but if you know how to leverage outer join, you can often get a lot of mileage out of that. Okay. So print the name of the most expensive item or items, because we always have that problem of ties, um, to compute the, or, or, or yeah, we want the most expensive item in each order, just the name of that. So we noticed that in the previous time, that we've, we've dealt with this issue before, and it was pretty ugly. We had to create a, a subquery to actually find the most expensive product in the order. We then had to join that subquery back against order contents and products to figure out which products actually met that criteria. And the key was, just like in the discussion of window functions, it was getting a row that contained an original unabridged row of the order contents table, but also 
an extra column saying something about the entire order. Uh, and so uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to start by writing a query where in a, in a single row, I have the name of a product, the price of that product. Uh, I guess I need the order number of that product. I, I guess I'll put that at the beginning because it's an order-based query. The name, the uh, price, and the order number, and we'll just start with from the usual. We'll see if I know what to join it to this time. Okay, good. Uh, so I now have this is the what my usual query where I join the two tables together, assuming that I do it correctly. So now what I want is to add another column. I want to keep only those products that are the most expensive thing in their order. So I'm going to compute. Okay, so wait, the most expensive thing would be well the maximum price per kilogram over the set of items in this order. So partition by order number. Uh, and I guess I'll give that in, well, we'll just run that and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to give that a name. I'm going to call it max price. Um, there we go. And we can see that uh, we now have order 1001. The max price column is 6.10. And maybe you, like me, have gotten sick of the way dBeaver does this floating point round, solves this weird floating point rounding thing, which is that it truncates and doesn't round like it's supposed to. Um, and order 1003, the max price is 10. Um, now, the issue is that we, we don't want all of these. We only want to keep the products where price per kilogram equals max price. So can I do this? And let's see what it, let's see what happens. It says, well, rather concisely, hopefully you can read this. It says error, max price does not exist, which is a fair point. The where clause is computed right after the from clause. It's not this up here, the column selection clause isn't done until after the where clause. So at this moment in the where clause, there is no column called max price. So I'm not allowed to filter using that. Um, the way I would solve this is pretty simple. I would just say, okay, well, I mean, who cares? Let, who cares what the, it, there might be some clever way I could jam in an extra clause to help me with this. But the way I'm gonna handle it is just say, look, I'll just make this entire relation with this max price column and just call it a temporary thing. And then I'm going to uh, select everything from that where the price per kilograms equals max price. If I run that, I only get those rows. So it, it turns out, that, I mean, there are various tricks you can do in SQL to avoid writing a nested query. I don't see why we need to do that. I, um, there are reasons why nested queries in certain contexts can be slow. But the argument is, until I know better than the database engine, I shouldn't go making assumptions. I shouldn't second guess myself. I don't know what's slower or faster, so I should do what comes naturally. Um, you'll learn this in every other language as well, which is often people get strange ideas about what's slow and fast based on assumptions they make. So typical weird things, assumptions people make in languages like C and Java are, oh, I shouldn't use a multiplication because I could use a bit shift or something like that. Well, maybe that's faster if you write assembly, but how do you know that the C compiler can make that faster? Um, and so until you know everything about the way the compiler works, don't assume anything. So I like a nested query because it's an easy way of just getting the columns I want and being able to filter them. So I have that, and I suppose it just says, it, all it wants is the name, so I should do select, uh, well, wait. It implies that it wants the order number and the name. Um, Deep Beaver's I'm fighting with its autocomplete. There we go. Uh, okay, so in order 1001, most expensive product. In fact, I'll give it as most expensive. Order 1001, it's lime. Order one, uh, or sorry, order 1000, it's lime. Order 1001, it's peach. Order 1002, it's raspberry, and so on. So I've used window functions to avoid that, or I've used the over clause, which is a symptom of window functions. Um, okay, so. Uh, this is a query we spent a bit of time on before. We already wrote this several ways, and if you if you've taken a look at the uh, solution that I that I posted um, uh, for the last applied SQL lecture, you'll see that I actually included outer join in there. Um, so uh, I'll write it a few ways here as well, because it turns out that um, there's actually more than two versions, but there's one, there's one broad solution using a join, one broad solution using, a, using window functions of various sorts. The join one isn't trivial, 
but uh, it's still way better or like way shorter than what we had to do with natural joins. So back when we did this, uh, solve this query before, we used a natural join, a couple of, a bunch of natural joins and unions and things, and we ended up with this big mess. And we were able to narrow the mess down. We were even able to come up with a clever trick using a case when construct, uh, construction, but um, an outer join makes this a great deal easier. So I'm going to, I'm going to go relatively quickly through um, the mechanics of finding the sets of more expensive products because we've already seen that part before. Basically what I want to do is I want to select um, all of the different, uh, I want to select for each product ID the number of products that are more expensive than it. And that is a query that I only have to do inside of the products table. So I'm going to do select um, product ID. I'm going to start with select product ID and count star uh, as um, the more expensive count from, and then I'm going to take two copies of the products table and join them to uh, each other. And we're going to start by using an inner join. Now we've actually done this same query already, even in the discussion of extra joins, but just in case you, you fast forwarded through that part. So I'm going to do inner join products as P1 to products as P2. Um, on, and I have no choice but to use the on clause here because I need to provide a strange join criteria. So what I want is I want to have the thing on the left be a single product and the thing on the right be every product more expensive than it. So I want to join on the criteria that P1's price is less than P2's price. So the first thing is let's just see what happens if I do this. Oh, whoops, I actually forgot a piece. So um, yeah, I guess P1 dot product ID. So I forgot two things. I have to say P1 dot product ID. I'm going to rename that as product ID. Uh, so for each product ID, I want the count of more expensive things. Now, you, of course, to do that, I obviously actually have to group somehow. So I'm going to do group by P1 dot product ID. Remember that this rename I did up here doesn't apply until after the grouping is done. So I have to use the original name here. Okay, so I'll run that. Okay, product ID one, more expensive count four. Product ID two, more expensive count three. But wait, where's product number four? Well, product number four is the most expensive product. And there is nowhere that I've joined it to um, another row because there was nothing that was more expensive than it. Um, and I can justify this. I'm going to create a variant query here. This is the part that's mostly review from that previous video, but just in case. Um, We'll select star from this thing here. And we can see there's the four rows that Apple is paired up with, things that are more expensive than Apple. There are the five rows that Pineapple is paired up with, but there's nothing that Raspberry, which is number four, is paired up with. Uh, lime is paired up with two things, peach is paired up with one thing, but there's no raspberry because there's nothing here that raspberry is less expensive than. And so not, this join never works. So what I want, I think, is a left outer join. So I want everything on the thing on the left to show up, even if it's got nothing I can pair it up with. If I do that, I get a row for Raspberry. I have to. It's required by the fact that I'm doing an outer join. Product ID is null. Okay, so let's now, we can fold that into our query here. So instead of doing a inner join, I do a left outer join on the same criteria. And sure enough, it says product ID 1, there are four things that are more expensive. Product ID 6, there are five things that are more expensive. But wait a minute, what's this? There is nothing more expensive than product ID 4. So what's happening here? Well, I'm using the count star aggregation function, which is saying count the number of rows that have this product ID, product ID 4. There's only one row, and it's that row full of null values. And count star counts that. What I want to count is the number of actual product IDs that are more expensive. So I count p2.productID. And as you may remember from the, the video on null values, the count function never sees null values when you ask it to count an attribute. So here, there is a row for product ID 4, which is why there's a group for it. But when it tries to count the product ID under P2, it's null, so the count function doesn't see it. So this is already a little bit, I mean, this is not, we're not getting as amazing a result as we got up here. We were able to get a pretty, uh, pretty short query, especially in query number one, compared to our sort of uh, first principles 
queries here. So we're actually not even done this as well. The problem here is that we it said to select the name of the product, and we know better than to go around um, trying to do every all the aggregation by name. We know that um, we have to use ID for that. So most expensive by ID as I'm going to put this in a width. Um, and we'll just have that in. So I have to actually take the result that I got, which is done by product ID only, and I have to select name, comma, more expensive count from this thing that I just created, natural join, uh, the products table again. So I get that. Okay, so now I can see that there are five things more expensive than pineapple. That's still a lot of stuff. But if you remember what we had to do last time, I guess I can, I probably have it here somewhere. I, I, I'm now curious exactly how long that took. It was a, a pretty hideous query. Um, so it, the basic solution involving, um, we had to use a cross join before, uh, ended up being, I don't know, about, about 18 lines or so, and it required quite a bit of sort of contorted uh, aggregating and joining. This is a bit better because the outer join and the way that the count operator behaves gets us around some of the thorniest parts of that, but it's, there's still quite a bit there, and there's some we can't get around because of this need to aggregate based on ID. Because we're aggregating on ID, the only things we get are ID and the aggregation. We don't get names. So we have to go back and rejoin the value of um, the ID against the name. So this is a case where window functions can really shine. We know that because window functions don't collapse rows, any extra information that we might need later, like the name of a product, can ride along. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, ultimately, I do need a count. Like that's, that's clearly um, the, the, the crux of this query. What I want to do is with, um, within the products table, I would like to, to rank the different products by their price, and then for each product, I want to know where it sits in that ranking. Uh, and so I have a few ways of doing that. Um, I could use the rank function, or I could in fact use the count function. If you think about what I just said, count the number of things that are more expensive. Well, what that means is sort all of the rows by price, and then count how many rows appear from the one row after the current row to the end of the table. So I'm going to write that version first, just so that because then when I write the one using the rank function, it's even shorter. So I'm going to select product name, and the, uh, I'll do this on a separate line. And uh, from products, name and count of everything over the following window. I'm going to order by price per kilogram. And that's, that's ascending, but we can write ascending there. Um, order by price per kilogram. And then I want to count the rows between the row that comes after this row, so one following row, and the end of the table, which is unbounded following. So that just means as far into the future as you can possibly go. So we'll try that. And you might notice, uh, I'm actually, hmm, I'm going to sort by name. We might notice apple, there's four things. Pineapple, there's five things. Raspberry, there's zero things. I'm, I am ordering the products by their price, and I'm counting the number of rows. If we now order by price again, what this window is doing is saying order by price. I've done that here. Now, for each product, like apple, take all of the rows between the one following it and unbounded in the future, so all the way down. That's all of these rows here. And then take those rows and count them. That's all we're doing. We're not summing up anything. We're just counting them. So I count them. There are four of them. Apple gets four. Raspberry, there are zero rows below it. So count them. You get zero. Um, of course, I can also use the rank aggregation function. Now we're going to be a little bit careful about this. So I want to compute the rank of this row over, well, I just have to order the whole table by price per kilogram, I guess. Let's see what happens. And we're almost there. So, okay, um, let's see. I select the name, I select the rank, but wait a minute, yeah, pineapple's not rank one. I want the number of things that are more expensive. And in fact, I actually should be naming it that, more expensive count. So this should be as more expensive count. And we'll notice, yeah, okay, there isn't one thing more expensive than pineapple. There are five things. 
So I've made a mistake here, which is, of course, I don't just want to order by price per kilogram. I want the thing that has rank number one to be the thing with uh, the highest price so that so that it's, or sorry, the thing with the, the uh, here we go. Um, okay, so now uh, I, I want to sort by name again so it's more clear that that actually changed. But you can see now raspberry has one and pineapple has six. And if you look at the counts, they're in the right order, but they're still off. So the rank, if I sort things by price descending, the very first thing is a raspberry, so its rank is one. But there are zero things more expensive than it. And the sixth thing is pineapple, so its rank is six. But there are five things more expensive than it. And then we're, really, we can think about this just like in the previous case where we solved this problem. Raspberry is being included in its own count. So I have to do something like take the rank um, and then subtract one from it to get my result. So that, that's a, an, an annoying quirk. It's one reason on an exam you'd be given a decent amount of slack for this problem. You, you likely would have to lose some mark for it because it's different than getting a perfect answer. On an assignment this can be annoying, but because you can play with queries on assignments uh, it's usually easier to detect. Um, this is interesting because you might look at that and say, yeah, well, that seems overly complicated. Why would I bother using the count when I could use rank? Well, that's the whole point of rank. Well, that's why I wanted to write rank third. So hindsight's always 2020. If you know you can, if, if you realize that counting the number of more expensive products is the same as ranking things, then it's obvious. But maybe if I describe it as the, the number of more expensive products, that sounds more like a counting problem than a sorting problem. And so maybe it's more natural to try and phrase it in terms of this count function. And I found in the past that this is often, even though, yeah, this is, this is weird, often it's easier to visualize this solution than to visualize this, especially to think about, do I want ascending or descending? Do I want negative one? That's a bit of a tough one. So in any case, we'll, 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 we'll push through here. Um, so I want, uh, we're, we're back to, we're swinging back around to something um, that is more join related than um, uh, window function related. So I want the ID and name of each product along with the number of orders in which that product appears. And so I'll just conjure up the sort of basic example to, to show why we've got a problem here. Product ID and name and count star as num orders um, or mm, order count from products, natural join, order contents, um, and then I want to group by uh, product ID. And we can see that Raspberry appears in two orders, and actually I should do um, count distinct order num here if I'm if I know what I'm doing, because for all we know, we whoops, uh, we can't count on consistency of the database, so we won't necessarily we, we don't know enough about the schema to want to make this assumption. So we should just say count the number of actual order numbers that I see. And the issue here is that um, maybe you know you you can see that we, we're missing two products. This should include pro products that do not occur in any orders, and we maybe already might notice it's because of this join. If I do this join, the products that can't be joined get left out. So what I probably want is to um, use an outer join, which forces every product to get included. And we know that if we try to count the order number value, that it'll be a null value for those rows, the row for apple and the row for pineapple, and so it, gets, it doesn't get counted as anything. It, the count function doesn't see it. The row is in the result, but the count function doesn't count it as being there. So there will be a group for it, so I see it in my result, and the count comes out as zero. Um, and so I think that's, a, that's sort of nice. Uh, we, we, we sort of got everything uh, we want there. Um, Now, uh, let's see, so here, uh, maybe you can pick up on this, but uh, here we're, we're sort of building up to something, um, which is uh, we want to combine analytics on orders with uh, the ability to do uh, ranking or window functions or something else. So for each order, I want the name of every product, I want the price of that product in the order, and I want the rank of that product in the order. So let's start with the obvious thing here, which is that um, I want, uh, for, this, is, this is for each order, so I don't need to worry about the outer join here. So I'll select uh, for each order number, select order number, name, um, the total price of that product in the order would be the price per kilogram times the number of kilograms bought as, I, I'm going to call it item price. 
um, as well as the rank of that product in the order. And so that's why I'm going to I'm going to demonstrate the sort of basic query first. Um, okay, so I first join the two tables. I can use a regular non-outer join because I only care about products that that actually were purchased. Then I compute the total price of that. Um, of that product and I just want to differentiate that from the price of that product so remember that a product has a unit price so one kilogram of limes cost five dollars but I buy a specific quantity of it so the price of a lime in order 1000 is three not five because I only bought 0.6 um, kilograms of it so what I'm talking about here in terms of total price is the amount that I actually paid for the item not the price per kilogram Okay, so uh, the first thing is you should consider um, that there is a way of doing ranking without um, doing using window functions. But we obviously want to do ranking of some kind here, and you can try doing it without window functions. It's going to be a nightmare. What I want to know is not only do I want to know, and I'll, I'll run this, I, I want to know the actual price of the item. I also want to know where that item stands in the order. So for example, in order 1001, uh, lime is the most expensive item, so it should be at rank 1. And peach is the second most expensive, so it should be at rank 2. In order 1002, the most expensive thing is a raspberry, and the second most expensive thing is a pear. So I want to know that rank, and I mean, it just says the word rank, so maybe we should think about using that. I want to compute the rank over what? Okay, so um, first, I only want to compare things against things in the same order. So I divide up the rows by order number. I only want to look at the rows whose order number matches the order number of this row. And then I want to order the contents of that row by this value. So remember that item price doesn't actually exist as a column. If you want to do order by item price, you have to use a nested query. Now I don't want to do that, so instead I'm going to do price, I'm just going to compute the value dynamically again. Order it by this quantity, and I'm allowed to do math inside of the, the window function if I want to. I'm going to call it item rank. And so we, did a, we ranked over all of the rows in this order, sorted by this thing. And um, if I do that, we'll notice that, okay, so in order 1001, I bought $2 of pears and it's rank one, but I bought $50 of limes and it's rank three. Okay, so I think that there's a mistake there. Um, probably what I need, of course, and we've seen this happen over and over, is I'm sorting in the wrong direction. So if I use sort in descending order, okay, now lime is the most expensive thing, it is rank one. And the question is deliberately worded that way to try and make sure we, we notice the sorting order that we're using in the order by inside the over clause. Okay, so we have that. Um, and uh, again, there are lots of demonstrations of cases where window functions are clever. So if we scroll back up, well, that's neat. Look at that. We can do this in three lines. Who's to say that those three lines are actually easier to write than this whole thing? Maybe if you know about joins, this isn't so bad. And I mean, why is it this many lines anyway? Just because of the way I indented it. Um, there are lots of cases where, where window functions are neat. This is a case where I think concretely, if you tried to do this without window functions, it would be a bit of a nightmare. There'd be quite a, you'd have so much, um, uh, so many moving parts that you'd have to be managing because of the strange synthetic nature of ranking and the fact that SQL, because it's set-based, relation-based, doesn't terribly like ordering things. So there are, there are certainly ways of sorting things, but there aren't very many relational algebra components that you can use to, to actually elicit any information about, about the order or sorted order or ranking of anything. So having this function is, is a lifesaver for those cases. Um, okay, query number six. For each order, print the name of the third most expensive item. The third most expensive item. So hey, like in this order, order 1003, the third most expensive item is a lime. But wait, that's just the results of my previous query. I better, um, maybe we'll, we'll hold on to this one. So we'll, we'll take this down to query number six. Okay, so I've got, I, this computes the rank of each item in each order. Um, but now I've got a second problem, which is, uh, it says orders that don't have three items still need to have a row. So I want the name of the third most expensive item. So I'm going to begin, I'm going to make up a with clause here because I know I'm going to need one. So with, and I'm going to call this uh, order ranks as, and then we'll just put that there. Um, And then we'll just 
just try our best to indent this a little bit better. Okay, so we have this, um, and then we'll just, as a just to make sure nothing's gone horribly wrong here, we'll select star from order ranks. Okay, so that's fine. Um, what I want is to select star from order ranks where, uh, indent a little bit better, where the item rank equals three. Okay, so there you go. There's the third most expensive item in order 1001 and in order 1003. But it doesn't help us with order 1000 or order 1002 because they only contain two items or order 1000 only contains one item. So what do we do here? Um, we have a few options. So one option would be to use an outer join. Um, we could also use a union. So like before, we've seen that if we find that we're missing certain well-defined rows, we could always just go find them. So we could, for example, go find all the orders that only have uh, or that have fewer than three items and then join in extra rows for those things. However, in the spirit of using joins for everything, I, it, you know, by themselves without set operations, I'm going to take this and I'm going to do a, um, let's see, I want to do a right outer join. I'm going to join it back with order contents. Um, and let's see what we get. And we're going to, we're going to get some, some pretty ugly stuff at first here. Uh, I'm going to write out or join that with, oh, actually, I don't want order content. Sorry. I want to, finally, I want to use the orders table on, um, let's see, order ranks dot order num equals orders dot order num. We'll try that. So I was, uh, you, you might be looking at this and say, why do I bother with this? The column is the same. Why don't I, I use a natural right outer join? You could do that here. The reason why we have a problem with that is that um, uh, if we're not careful, we might end up, um, we might end up having more than one column in common. There are other columns like item price, item rank, and name. Just because we've constructed this table ourselves, it's not part of a, of a carefully constructed schema, it's usually better to be a bit cautious about those joins. Now, in this case, um, we still don't get what we want. Notice how there is still no row for order 1000 or 1002, and I mentioned this. There's, there, there's, a, there's a twist to this. Let's look at the outer join just by itself. Okay, so the outer join by itself is, uh, is, is pretty hideous. Um, so what I've done is I've actually joined uh, every item's rank against every order. But I, I should be able to, if I look carefully, I should be able to see um, order number 1000. There it is. And I can see order 1001. But if I filter this by item rank, I still don't get what I want. And so the difficulty we have is that the filtering I was doing has to be done before the join. Because if I do it after the join, then order ranks does contain order 100, order, order 1000, and order 1002. So they get joined just fine. I then filter them out later. So what I have to do is actually select out only the ones that are the, so only third rank as. And then I will select, let's see, select order num uh, name from order ranks where item rank equals three. Uh, and so I'm going to just throw this out for a second and we'll just take a look at that. Only third rank. So uh, just to, oh, there we go, extra semicolon. Just to be clear, what I've done here is I've pulled out only order 1001, order 1003, pair and line, the third ranked item. Okay, so the reason why that's useful is now I have a table that only contains the order, some order numbers out of all order numbers. Uh, and so I have to sub this back down here because I've changed the table. I no longer need a where clause because the filtering's already been done. And now my right outer join guarantees me everything on the right-hand side will appear in my result. And that means that order 1000 and order 1002, which don't appear because they, um, they don't have a third item, they do get this name column set to null. Uh, and so uh, what I'll want here is I want to say select orders.orderNum. So the order number column I want is the one from the orders table because that's the only one that guarantees me every order number. Uh, I'm going to rename it just as order num, and then name. And so I get a null name for those two products, for those two orders that do not have a third item. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff to unpack here. Now, there's, uh, there were a couple of things, uh, places where in this query you were watching me do it and maybe 
you believed it eventually, but it may not have been obvious why I was making a certain leap. In particular, I, I said, let's use outer joins. Now that made sense, I guess, because we know that outer joins are good at giving us null values for things where the, the otherwise there would be no row at all. Um, why did I choose a right outer join and not a left outer join? So that was the first place where I just made a decision. Uh, and the reason is because I, I had begun writing my query this is the table that was missing some stuff. This is the table that has everything. I want to make sure everything in this table, the right-hand table on the join, shows up in the result. So I want a right outer join. I could also do a full outer join here. Let's try that. It wouldn't hurt anything, but um, generally we like avoiding full outer join if we can, if we know already that there's only half of our um, query that only half of our uh, operands actually need to be present in the result, uh, need all their rows to be present. So that, that would be the orders table. So that's why I used a right outer join. Um, how did I figure out that the filtering was the problem? So in the middle there, I showed that if we attempted doing the join by itself, the f nothing happened. We ended up with nothing. We, we ended up with the same data we would have had otherwise. It apparently joined at the orders table, but it didn't actually give us the rows we wanted. How did I notice that? And, and I, I, I tried to demonstrate that by deleting my where clause and showing the result. But the key is what you want. What's supposed to be helping you here is outer join giving you those null values. Outer join doesn't do that if it can find anything to match your rows to. So you have to make sure that if there are rows missing, those rows are already missing before you do the outer join. That's why I separated this table off. And then I did the join. The rows were missing, row for order 1000, the row for order 1002. So I did the join. They showed up as null values. Uh, and then I was able to complete my query. Okay, for each pair of distinct products, and this is something that we've seen um, a couple of times, uh, for each pair of distinct products, um, print the number of times that that pair of products appeared together in the same order. Do not print pairs that never appeared together. So if it says do not print pairs that never appeared together, then um, we could uh, maybe already conclude that we may not need an outer join. We only need to actually observe things that we've seen already. We don't have to worry about, for example, products that never appear. That's typically an outer join problem. However, we still have this pairing issue. Um, so what I want is I want pairs of products that appear together in the same order. So what does it mean to uh, appear together in the same order? So it only says pair of products, not I IDs or names. Let's start by talking about IDs. Select um, star from order contents. I would argue that clearly the order contents table is where the action is going to be happening here because that's what maps products to orders. So product three and five, they appear together in the same order. Okay. Products uh, two and four appear together in the same order. Products three and two appear together in order 1001. And products three and two appear together in order 1000 and, um, oh, they don't, sorry. Products, let's see, I've got to try this again. Um, products three and five appear in order 1001. Products three and five also appear in order 1003. So pairs can appear together only once, they can appear together two times, uh, they can appear together never at all. Uh, so I only care about ones that have appeared together at least once, and I want to know how many times they appeared together. Here's the way I could tackle this. We've seen this done before with a cross join. It was in one of these tutorial sessions. I want to talk about using an inner join. So what I want to do is I want to get rows that contain two products from the same order in each row. In other words, what I want to do is take this entire thing and pair it up with itself, but with a special pairing criteria where I only use one of the columns. So I want to take every row with order number 1001 and pair it up with every other row that has order number 1001. So I want to do a join of order contents to itself but it's an inner join because I only want to pair things up on order number. So a natural join won't work. So select star from uh, order contents as OC1, natural join, uh, or not natural join, sorry, that defeats the whole purpose. Uh, inner join and then order contents as OC2. Uh, so we'll we'll start with that on uh, OC one dot order number equals OC two dot order number. All right. So now I've I've generated every uh, pairing of uh, of products within a particular order. 
So let's see if we can expand this and look at that as a huge table. So there's a lot of them. Here are all the pairs for order number 1001. I think there were three items, so there should be nine rows. We can see product two appeared with product two. That's not a surprise. Product two appeared with product three. Product two appeared with product five. Product three appeared with product two. Product three appeared with product three. There's a lot of them, but it does give every possible pairing. Um, now there's a question here of what the easiest way of um, uh, I guess, thinning out this because we know that some pairs appear twice. In order 1001, product two and product three appeared together, just, just in that order once. However, there is a row for two and three, and there's a row for three and two. And so we only want to see that one pair. And so we have a few ways of handling that. It's, it, it turns out where we do this filtering in this case makes no difference. Um, I'm going to leave it for now, but we could, if we wanted to, say OC1.productID is less than OC2.productID. That means we'll only see the pair 2, 3, not 3, 2. But we'll, we'll end up, I think, um, it's probably easier to, to, to do that later just to show that we can do it in both places, but also to see the problem once the counts are actually created. So I also want to select, I have to rename my columns because I've got quite a mess here. I only really care about the order number, one product and the other product. So I'm going to select um, oc1.ordernum, uh, let's see, uh, as order number, um, oc1.productid as product one, and oc2.productid as product two. And we'll try running that. Okay, so that prunes it out a little bit, although it still gives us a bunch of sort of weird, um, these unnecessary pairs, three, three, two, two, and there's two, three, and three, two. We, we don't want to see both of those in our result, um, but we've certainly pruned some of our information down. Uh, I'm, gonna need, I'm gonna need to make this a nested query, so I'll just make it a with statement um, or a with clause. So I'll call this pairs as, and then we'll indent this a bit more. So let's see what we can do with this. I, I, I now have this thing product one, product two, and order number, which I don't even think I need order number here. I don't care which orders they appear in together. I only care that they appear together in an order. So we'll try select product one, product two, and uh, let's see, count star as total orders together from pairs, I'm going to group by both product one and product two, and we'll see what we get. Okay, four, three, there's, they're in one order together. Two, five, they're in one order together. Um, three and three, okay, wait, what's three? Why do I want three and three? I don't care how many times a product was in an order with itself. So here, what I probably should do is I should say, I don't care about the counts for a product paired up with itself. I also don't want to see two products twice. I only want to see each pair once. I don't care if it's two, four, or four, two. I only want to see it once. So I'll impose a condition that only applies to one of those uh, duplicate pairs, and it's this one. Product one is, this is, there's a lot of other options too. This is the one I like. Um, product one is less than product two. That eliminates the case where they're the same product, where it's equal. It also eliminates one of the two sets of duplicates. You'll get two, four, but you won't get four, two. So we have that, but there's still this issue of, uh, it says for each pair of products, I, I guess it could mean, it might just mean ID. And if this were an exam question, that's how you should interpret it because you don't want to make yourself any more work than you have to do. But uh, suppose it wanted names, how would I get those? And the issue here is I have this table with a column called product one and product two. How do I get names? I've got this table called products, but I can't do a natural join because this isn't, the pairs table has nothing in common. Um, so what I have to do if I want to get the names out of this is I have to do a, an inner join. I, I have to join on an unusual column criteria. So I'm going to get the name for product one by joining pairs to products um, on uh, pairs.product1. Uh, and actually, I'm going to call this as p1. Pairs.product1 equals p1.productID. Um, so we'll start with that. Uh, I'm just going to I'm going to go to I guess I can't select um, I guess I can't select star here. In fact, actually, I'm, maybe we'll make this a nested query just to try and save ourselves some trouble. So uh, what we'll do is I'll call this one pair counts, and then we'll do this. 
we will indent this thing, and then we can play with the result without having to have it be such a huge mess. So we'll do that, and then we'll do select star from pair counts. All right, so we get the same thing. I ran the query, we get the same thing. I'm gonna make this box a little bit bigger. Uh, what I need to do now is I want to go back from product one and product two to the actual names. So I'm going to try something like this. Um, select, I want p1.name, p2.name, because I actually have to join this pair counts table with two different copies of my products table. One to pull in the names for the first product, one to pull in the names for the second product. And I want the total orders together. Uh, total orders together. Okay, from, what do I want? Well, okay, so I want pair counts. And then I want to match up the product one column with the ID column of a, the products table. So product says P1 on pair counts dot product one equals P1 dot product ID. Okay, so we'll start with that. And uh, I'll just select... Um, Product, I'll select product two here. I won't do product two dot name. Let's select the ID so we can verify that it matches up. There's product one has ID four. Its name is raspberry. That looks good. Um, my from clause is currently this big operation here. I need to do another inner join though because I need to join the result of this to another copy of the products table to give me this thing. It would not be correct to join against only one copy of the product table because each row could have two distinct names in it. In fact, it should have two distinct names. So I'm going to start for the sake of um, avoiding heartburn with using brackets, although we'll get, we're going to have to, I guess, um, get used to not needing them. Um, so I take, to, I take this whole thing and I do an inner join of this with another copy of the products table, which I'll call P2 for the sake of disambiguation, on pair counts dot product one uh, equals P2 dot product ID. I'm just realizing now I probably have to give a name to this. There we go, we'll try that. Uh, and we'll see if that works. Um, oh, this is an interesting point. There's no such thing as pair counts at this point because I've folded pair counts into this table I now call T1. So we do that. Um, same problem here. Uh, this would be t1.name. That's a bit ugly. Um, and then I would do p2.name here. So just to notice what's going on, I've joined pair counts to products, but I've called the, the whole result t1. So I can't use the name p1 anymore because it's stuck inside these brackets. So I then use t1.name. And then I join it to products again, and I call the products table I'm joining P2. And so I use P2.name, and I, I try running that. And I see that, um, let's see, oh, T1.product2. I don't want to join product one again. OK, so lime is three, product four is raspberry. Lime, pear is two, product four is raspberry. So I mentioned a minute ago, we used brackets to make it clear that I do this inner join followed by another inner join. But I don't need brackets for that. Inner join is left associative, so everything happens in left to right order. So it's perfectly valid for me to write this, just one big chain. And in this case, I would probably say something like, um, I would just write product2 equals p2.productID, and then I would print out p1.name. Notice that p1 still exists because it's part of the from clause. It's no longer inside some um, nested operation. So I have this, um, and it, so it gives me the same result. Uh, and so now I've got the product IDs and the names. They match up. I should delete these off. And so all I get are names. Um, and this is a pretty good, so the purpose of this example is to show off a very utilitarian application of inner join, um, which, and maybe what we'll do is to make it even more obvious what's happening here. Um, if I justify it like this, maybe it's more obvious that each of these inner join operations is happening in succession. I, nor I still like my indentation from earlier, but in case, just because you're new to inner join. So I take pair counts, I join it to this based on this condition. I then take the result and I join it to this, another copy of the same table based on this condition. So the point of the example was to show off uses of inner join to do something pretty utilitarian, which is just I have two tables, I want to join them, but not necessarily on all of their columns. 
either because um, the columns they have in common don't exist, like this case here where the columns have strange names, or up here where they do have too many columns in common because I'm joining the same table back to itself. So inner join is useful for that. You can do it with natural join if you do a bunch of uh, contortions for renaming columns, but you do often need to join tables together based on arbitrary criteria. And although it's a bit ugly, inner join is one way of doing it. Um, you might want to entertain whether there's any way of doing this faster um, or perhaps also with a bunch of joins but maybe less ugly looking ones using window functions. But that's something I'll leave to you to think about.